Good morning, everyone. The question I want to start with today is that how do we navigate through the through our destinies uh, in a world which is constantly and rapidly changing? Consider this: because of the advancements in medical technology, we are going to live longer. The average lifespan of human being has gone up by about 20 years in the last few years. So, advancement in medical technology means we are going to live longer. If you're going to live longer, we are going to work longer. If you're going to work longer, then we need to be skilled longer. And if you want to be skilled longer, you know our kids are going to be working on careers that don't even exist today. My father was a librarian. You know the 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 whole uh, profession of library science has transformed after that. We don't have. Traditional librarians anymore, so careers are being disrupted at at a far rapid pace than it used to be. So it is impossible to build a long arc of successful, and more importantly, a fulfilling and satisfying career simply based on uh, what you have learned in the school and college. So we need to arm ourselves with the power of self-initiated and self-directed learning. self directed learning is primarily it starts from the heart it starts from a strong internal desire to do something to know something and to change something for better so th this attitude of self directed learning has played a very very important role in my own uh, journey so far and let me share a little bit of that story uh, with all of you here so eric hoffer uh, said that in times of profound change the learners inherit the earth while the learned find themselves beautifully equipped to deal with a world that no longer exists you know i you see i've never been to a traditional college in my life so after clearing my schooling from um, uh, you know with an average sort of grade i struggled with career for myself for almost one year you know i started uh, studying in the same town uh, you know i started studying uh, the industrial chemistry uh and uh, after a while i figured out that this is not the thing for me so i dropped out after two months and i got admitted into a civil engineering course hoping that i'll be an engineer who will build uh, great things uh, uh, some uh, sometime great buildings um, after a while even the first semester was over i dropped out again after a year you know the admissions were still i was still getting admission in the architecture college and you know i was so fearing myself dropping out of it that i did not even push further just because i thought i will drop out so i didn't have a i didn't had a really good start into the career but i found uh, my passion uh, later on in software development obviously you know when i was struggling through my career my parents were really really worried but they didn't sort of show uh, it to me they just continued supporting me uh, wholeheartedly and then i found my passion uh, in software development and i got enrolled into a private institute uh, in this private institute i was learning software development and at the same time you know there was a huge demand that i from the family that i basically get into a traditional course so i enrolled into a distance education uh, graduation course uh, which i somehow completed after a while but there was a problem there because i was you know adopting new technologies when i was studying at the institute and i was uh, uh when i was uh, studying uh, you know in in the traditional course which meant that i barely completed my uh, my graduation and when i was doing my masters uh, i again dropped out once again so i have a strong history of dropouts as you can already see now uh, and then the and i think uh, that uh, you know uh, that struggle for survival was really uh, a strong one um, now what happened in the, in the technology field what happened is and i'm talking about this uh, year 1998 and year 2000 when internet was not so resourceful it was not so uh, uh, you know widely used in the society and i had to learn these new technologies all on my own uh, so i so i would learn uh, you know things uh, from uh, from the from the fact that i would execute some things i would learn from my friends do a lot of trial and error and 
these new technologies along the way. Uh, so finally, I think uh, what happened at the end of the day is that I found reasonable success uh, in my career after a long struggle of about uh, six years where I was actually not sure of what will happen in my life. I finally found my superpower. And my superpower was to learn in a completely self-directed mode. That I didn't, my life actually transformed the day I realized that I didn't have to depend on uh, on anything, any building, any degree, any piece of paper uh, to, to, uh, to learn. That if I was willing to take risks, if I was willing to experiment, if I was willing and generous to share my lessons, uh, I could do. And that newfound superpower was super liberating. I would like to think that I found reasonable success uh, in, in, the, in the years uh, uh, that followed. And you know, today I lead a large organization. I speak at international, national, international events. I've written two books. My work gets uh, featured in uh, prestigious publications. Uh, I found a lot of success, I, I think. But more importantly, I think I applied the same principles of self-directed learning to learn also other things apart from profession. Because you know, professionally, we somehow have to survive. But I wanted to do something more than just survive. I wanted to really thrive. And so I applied the same principles of self-directed learning to learn things like playing a mouth organ, a harmonica, singing on a karaoke, uh, creating sketch notes that you see on the screen now. Um, you know, a lot of uh, so public speaking, photography. I learned a lot of these things all by myself. And I, I had really finally found my superpower. So today I want to share my critical lessons from this whole journey of being a nobody to trying to be somebody to actually creating a destiny uh, for myself. And I want to today focus on the three um, L's. So that's exactly how I, uh, I used to be at one point in time. Uh, but today I want to talk about three L's for self-directed learning. This is, this is a distillation of my own experience in how, how do we build a destiny uh, from, uh, from ground zero. The first L that I want to talk about, and these three L's have everything to do with the heart, the head, and the hands. So the first L that I want to talk about is labor of love. Now I have a six-year-old son. And he loves, to, he loves to draw. He loves to create uh, greeting cards. You know? And when he, is that, when he is engrossed in creating these greeting cards, he just loses the sense of time, sense of space. He just does not know where he is. He is so engrossed that even if you call out his name, he wouldn't respond because he is not here. He is deeply immersed into something that is greater than himself. And that is what I call labor of love. It's where passion meets the effort. It is basically playing where your passion really is. And I think this is, the, this is at the heart of self-directed learning. Because I have, I have understood that you cannot be great. You can survive by doing things that everybody else does. But if you want to really thrive, if you want to really grow in the career, if you want to really make a unique contribution to the society, you need to play where your passion is. In absence of this, you know, you will just coast along and, and be living a reactive life. Whatever happens to you, you will simply react to it. But my learning from uh, this journey has been that you have to play where your passion is. And, and get into this flow state where you lose the sense of time and space. I've often seen uh, musicians, I've often seen uh, small kids, I've often seen artists and dancers, they get into a certain zone when they're performing. And I think that is at the heart of uh, uh, you know, what I call as labor of love. So if your labor is guided by love, it takes a different meaning. Versus if your labor is guided by the need to comply with some external demand, then it takes a different meaning. So how do we identify? This is a question I get asked very often is, how do you identify your labor of love? And I have four questions to, uh, for you to ask yourself if you want to identify what is your labor of love. So what is it that you would do even if nobody paid you to do it? What, what are your inherent skills? What are you born with? And there are certain skills you can be trained for. 
but there are certain skills that you have to learn on your own. What puts you in this slow state, which is that what is it that you do that you lose the sense of time and space? And what change do you want to see around you? What change do you want to see inside of you? And if you find, if you answer these four questions, you will probably hit your purpose. And it's only when you have your purpose that you can actually um, uh, build, uh, you know, your self-directed learning. It starts from the labor of love. Now, I started creating sketch notes, um, and I'm just giving one example from my own journey of uh, doing self-directed learning. So I started creating these sketch notes that you see on the screen only in 2015. I, I've always been uh, passionate about writing. So writing was my home. Every time I'm distressed, every time I'm happy, I would just go and write. So writing was my home, and in the struggle to find a best way to put uh, things out, I stumbled upon uh, this concept of sketch notes. So I started doing these sketch notes only in 2015. My first sketch note was very, very basic. But then I shared it on the internet, on Twitter somehow. People liked it. I got some encouragement, so I upped my game. So I got better quality of paper, better pens, uh, you know, and then a better digital coloring system for myself. Uh, and I shared and I improved my game. Finally, you know, these sketch notes uh, ended up becoming viral on social media. Uh, today, these sketch notes are seen by tens of thousands of people. Uh, who visit my blog and, uh, and and consume these sketch notes and often come back saying that this is a great way for them to learn. So what started for me as my own pursuit basically became a service for others as I uh, sort of elevated my game. So it's amazing how you can elevate your game when you play where your passion really is. You know, these sketch notes, I, I just shared the journey of sketch notes. So they've been featured on in the international conferences, in the magazines, uh, in the international magazines in books and everywhere. And obviously, they've been um, you know, featured on Forbes and World Economic Forum and uh, Huffington Post and uh, Harvard Business Review and so on. But this is what happens when you play where your passion really is. The second L that I want to talk about is lifelong learning. We've been trained to, to, to depend on somebody else for our learning. But the essence of li lifelong learning is to keep the inner fire alive. It is to have an open mind, receptive for new learning. It is about creating new knowledge, adding to your existing knowledge, blending your knowledge with your unique experiences, and making a different meaning out of it. It is about collaborating. It is about working with others. And it is about executing. Because at the end of the day, the best learning happens while doing things, not by reading things, not when consuming things, not when watching videos. But when you actually do something, that's when you learn the best. So at the heart of lifelong learning is this openness to learn, this willingness to learn. And trust me, if you are playing where your passion is, this willingness, you don't have to work on being more willing because it happens as a result of you being very passionate about what you're doing. Now, I started my blog in year 2006 when Twitter was two years old and Facebook was about one and a half, two years old. That's when I started blogging. It started from a deep internal desire to share my lessons uh, as I, uh, as I uh, learned uh, how to lead people, how to lead organizations, how to manage people. What happened as a result of all that is that I thought I was writing for myself. I was given an advice that write for an audience of one. I was writing for myself. But at the end of the day, I figured out that I learn the best when I learn from others, which means that in, in the need to write a lot, I started reading a lot. I started connecting with people a lot. I started reading books. I connected with authors. And what happened as a result of that is that I learned with a community. I learned with a bunch of people who were as passionate as I was. And that made all the difference. So we learn best when we learn with others. We think learning happens in isolation, but learning happens in collaboration. And in fact, uh, somebody very nicely put it, said that the best learning is the learning of relationships between things, between people, between subject, between the object. Finally, uh, you know, the reason I was able to create these sketch notes was because 20 years back, when I was struggling to find a career for myself, I actually prepared for the architecture entrance exam, where I had to do some drawing, I had to do some uh, scribbling, some shading, etc. 20 years later, after being a successful blogger and, and a business leader, etc., etc., uh, I found that this drawing that I did back in time helped me create these sketch notes. So it is because I have multiple pursuits 
because I dabble into multiple things, I can pick lessons from one area, port the lessons to a totally different area. And that portability of lessons is what creates new knowledge. It what, it's what creates your unique knowledge. So differentiation and innovation in business and in life happens when you take two areas and look for the intersections. For example, I was laid off in year 2002. I lost my job. And I had to find out what should I do which taps into my inherent potential. Now, I was a technologist. I was also a writer. I combined technology and writing to create a career for myself in technical writing for a while before I moved on into the management positions. So this is how differentiation really works. Don't look for absolutes, but look for interesting intersections where it's less crowded, where if you get in, you have an early moving advantage, and then you can build your own small little world from that particular intersection. Finally, the third L I want to talk about is leverage. Leverage is, in simplest terms, you know, a way to find how your gift can benefit others. It happens when you find uh, a way to create a positive impact on yourself and on the others. So, again, you know, self-directed learning is a combination of these three things. It's it's a combination of labor of love, lifelong learning, and uh, leverage. Um, so, you know, it's about finding that sweet intersection between what do I know, how will it benefit others, and what can I do to serve others. Now, I want to bring this element of service because I started my blog for myself, it became a service for others. I started sketchnoting for myself, it became service for others. And here's the thing, your work, and it doesn't matter if you're an artist or not, but your work becomes art when it changes others for better. So if you're an engineer, you build solutions that change how people live their lives. If you're a doctor, you can touch meaningfully uh, the lives of people you treat. If you're an artist, obviously, you know, you tap into the emotion of the people and change them for better. And so your work becomes, a, a, you know, uh, art when you do it in the spirit of service for others. So we live in a golden age of self-directed learning. It is easier than ever to find your heroes. It is easier than ever to be a part of community around what you are passionate about. It's just a matter of taking charge. It's just a matter of staying open to possibilities, to exploring what lies within you, what lies outside of you, and finding that sweet spot where the magic really happens. Self-directed learning is a great way to build destinies. In fact, for 21st century where changes are so rapid and rampant, Self-directed learning is your weapon. Are you ready to embrace it? Thank you.